I am 30 years and one day old today and it is awesome and I just like mm, I can't wait I feel like it's been a really long time since I've touched my YouTube um, I got sick a couple weeks ago um, with this just nasty cold that has been going around that is mostly like a cough and uh, sore throat related but everything else felt fine so I um, I was out in LA last weekend and I had a great time other than the like dying from my sore throat and just like talking non-stop like way too much like that slowed down the healing process for sure and then um this weekend was my birthday and i apparently didn't want to record any of it i guess it was like i was just gonna feel it out and see what happened but that's what happened it's the sunday now sunday night as i'm like getting all my ish together for work this week and i had a lot of birthday festivities this week. I mean, I felt like I was doing it last weekend too, but I just so thankful for the, my friends who made this weekend so beautiful. I am, don't have the right words. I should hire a writer because I don't know how to do this job. I didn't plan anything for the day of my birthday because the brunch that I wanted to do is only on Sundays today. So I was like, whatever, Saturday is my birthday. I'll just entertain myself. I really haven't had a lot of free time on weekends. So I was like, I would go to yoga, run my errands, treat myself to something, I don't know, massage, whatnot. But, you know, I ended up going to yoga, doing some things and getting picked up and going to the women's march, which was like, meh. Um, and then going to a cafe that I wanted to go try. Then my friend took me to the cemetery, which is just one of my favorite places. It's like right there. I didn't want to do anything crazy. Just wanted to like be thoughtful and enjoy the sun that suddenly sprang out of nowhere after like two weeks of gloominess and rain. Couldn't have asked for better weather. We just oh, climbed a hill. Like, honestly, if I'm ever in a bad mood, I need to tell myself to g climb a hill. Like, like it, fly a kite, go in the ocean, something. Like, I climbed a hill. I saw the beautiful clear view of our bay. My friend and I just chatted about life and career goals and things. Caught up. And I want to know the intricacies of their daily lives, if possible. Like, I mean, isn't that what a partnership is? Isn't that what, like, friendship is? So for me, like, I I mean, I love that I have long, um, long-distance friends who I can just pick up and, like, anytime just talk, talk with. But I also need that daily intimacy of, like, I know that last week you were feeling kind of off or I know that you were interested in this guy you were dating and like how's that going and just having those check-ins with someone I mean I think those strong relationships are why I never really felt like I need to throw myself into a romantic relationship because I have these regular check-ins with these brilliant people and I feel really cared for and loved. Um, after that, she came over to my house. She's never been here, which is like super sad. So we like made it a point for her to like come over, have some tea, talks more. And then I had went to dinner with um, some other people who just, you know, casually like planned this thing for me, which I was not expecting to go to. I mean, I wasn't expecting to see anyone that, Day. so we all went to dinner um went to their house just like ate a bunch of great food people brought me dessert like every day for the past three days and then 
today, which is sort of the one thing I was planning, because I don't like to plan and I didn't want people to feel obligated to do anything or to go out of their way. So I just have a favorite brunch place nearby and it's a buffet situation. So I um, kind of invited a big group of people and surprisingly, all of, most all of them showed up. I was not expecting that. So there's just a lot of energy, a lot of positivity. And I like felt like I needed to give a little bit of a speech. So I did have a little bit of a speech prepared, which is basically sort of the sentiment that I'm giving right now, which is just, I feel so different and than I did a year ago. And I couldn't have done it without these supportive friends I have. And uh, while it was an amazing year, I just cannot wait for the next year because I feel like I've laid a lot of foundation on figuring out how to be happy and that I even want to be happy, period, because I just never thought that was a possibility or like an interesting notion to me to like just be happy, be alive, be present, be connected. And now I'm like, I've taken that first stepped in realizing I want to and just like so I said some of these things and I just like felt really corny telling some of my friends this because like they see me all the time it's just like kind of stilted but I'm still really glad I did it because at the end of the day I don't get everyone in that room together like that and it is 30 so I might as well like get on my soapbox for once and do that um I just wanted to also tell people that like if they ever wanted to talk to me about anything like this, self-growth, like therapy, um, mental health, like I totally like always willing to listen. I'm always an ear to talk to because I got lots of time and I couldn't be happy. Like it's like one of the, my favorite things to do. So continuing with that theme, I actually um, had a, the rest of the day was like freaking birthday heaven I went to a Maria Bamford comedy ish show where it was um, mostly a panel about her um, her show Lady Dynamite um, with some of her co-workers and that was a doozy uh, just lots of ups and downs in that show the host was off the chain just awful random person who tried to monopolize the entire show and make it about his own jokes and his own career or whatever, his own history. Maria was the most gracious, sweet, humble person in the world. Like everything she said was just so self-effacing. And like we know this about her, like anyone who's seen her knows that like that's not an act. She's literally 100% who she is on TV um, in real life. <coughs> but um, I, it just brought me back to the times when I first started watching her and realizing like this is finally a female comedian or a comedian in general who I feel like I so similar to like I can relate to I can relate to her, her comedy it's not that her life is like mine but her comedy and her sensibility and her humor is like my style and I can totally see how I can like apply some of her skills and tricks to how like making myself a better writer and like getting over my fear of being on stage I mean this is really really deep like me and like my feelings towards Maria Banford are so personal like her bipolar disorder is in some ways so similar to my mom's and there are times when I I just love her so much and like obviously my mom is not Maria Bamford and my mom is very different and like we have baggage but it made me appreciate my mom you know it really made me just try to like kind of see her outside of her role as my mom and um, not only that her Maria Bamford's like comedy on mental health and the way she approaches it is so classy and so creative um, and so not egotistical that it helped me as well. It's helping me figure out how I can approach the topic of talking about my mom in stand up, which I really haven't done yet. She's so also like interested in plugging and promoting minority comedians. It is 
crazy how like empathetic and active she is on Twitter and in her work now. Um, and I'm sure I feel like on her next project to like give people more voice. It's so interesting because like she has been on the hustle for so long and she finally is like kind of become a big deal now. Um, but like, I just feel like she's, she was a silenced voice for so long and still is in a lot of ways. And her show got canceled and I don't think there's nearly enough about mental health out there, but she's like, all about promoting other people. She's like always trying to think about how she can like make other people better. And like there's a huge healthy dose of like white guilt wrapped up in that I feel, but like it's just so cool. She's so nice and I got to tell her like I love her and I got to ask her a question um, and about her writing process like during the Q&A at the end of the panel. And it was just the perfect show to see although the host was infuriating and kind of made you think, made me think like typical, typical old white dude just coming in here, trying to make, you know, get his stage time, like way too many jokes, way too many interruptions. It is not cool to interrupt someone, especially if you have any experience with people who like aren't used to being in the center of attention or like are coming from a culture that isn't super like, um, loud like well spoken you have to give them time like give them space to let them talk and he wasn't even a good talker the thing is he just kept like stuttering and pausing because he's trying to like think of a joke like dude you're seriously workshopping your jokes right now when you're interviewing these brilliant people on stage and hundreds of people are paid so much money to come watch you do this like it boggles my mind. This was like the worst host I have ever seen. And I'm getting upset already. Like I couldn't even watch him. So I'm just going to move on and talk about the next topic, which was after that, I had a lovely time just like having heart to hearts with my friend about like all of this, like health, turning 30, career, um, therapy, all this stuff. And it was just like, oh my God, I'm gonna, my heart is going to explode because I like... I know I don't really want to be a therapist yet and I know like none of that area of like life coaching and um, self-help is really in my realm right now of like what I can actually do for work but I just love that stuff so much so just being able to talk one-on-one -on -one with friends <coughs> who are self-aware and excited to change something and have similar background that I do, like similar experiences, is just like, oh my god, it's the best gift I can imagine. Like, I have gotten so many gifts this this month alone, um, but during this birthday period, so many gifts in the form of people just like listening to me, seeing me, letting me like be super honest with them, whether they it's nice they want to hear it or not and also being honest with me about like their hopes and dreams and their their history and their childhood it's just like I don't know what it's, it's so emotionally it recharges me like I thrive on this I feel like there are extroverts thrive on you know interaction introverts people who need to recharge when they're alone but there should also be this like other section I mean you don't need to define yourself as it but like you recharge from deep, meaningful conversations. I feel like tons of people fall into that category. Like, I need one-on-one, -on -one, honest, genuine conversations that don't need to serve a purpose, that have space to meander and explore, and the two people, you know, you have a mutual agreement that, like, you're in a safe space. It's just like... I can't believe I I feel so happy about turning 30 like I am so happy I feel like everyone can see it it's just infectious and that's the great thing and I'm already like anticipating the flip side unfortunately which is that not everyone wants to see it and I don't know how this is going to affect my career especially um 
Uh, I feel like my friends are solid and everyone is just going to be in my life for a long time and they're on this ride with me and they get me and even if they don't like totally feel me, they get it. But like work-wise, I'm worried that like it's just I'm going to be glaringly obvious that it's not really the right environment for me or some people are not going to want to hear all of these opinions from me because it's not really my place sometimes like it's I'm just one copywriter so I'm really wondering like if I keep overstepping my boundaries or if I decide that I'm not happy with certain things because there's so many changes going on um it, this definitely will be I don't know the beginning of like some reevaluation on what I should be doing with my job So, um, the other thing that's been going on that I, I guess has been on the back of my mind, back burner, is that I met this person, um, through Tinder who I really, really like. And I'm just trying so hard not to let my current bliss, oh, like, kind of tint my view of them because right now I'm just so happy like I think I could just like fall in love with anyone because I'm just in this like euphoric state and this is so fun because I feel like I'm just in love with myself in the world it is so cool so I don't know how realistic it is I've only been on two dates with this person and I had to cancel because I was sick on Friday um I think I'll see them again you never know and I'm like so hesitant about dating and meeting people from the internet so I'm like I have no expectations and as we know I'm very good at keeping my expectations below ground zero so I will see if that uh anything happens but I just want to throw that out there into someone it's a good feeling I haven't been into someone like this in I really haven't in two years um someone who like has all of the qualities I can see myself like being with them for a really really long time which is crazy and I don't know them so maybe take that with a grain of salt maybe I am kind of making something up right now I don't know but I don't want it to happen again so that is going on but other than that I am just energized I'm energized for a new week at work and please weather gods throw us a bone and like give us some sun give us some warmth um i just feel lit so good i'm gonna go listen to some music and play some music i like the voice too i like the way my voice sounds very low it's probably not gonna last but i should go make like write a hit song and make a music video with my sultry voice um this is me wishing you a beautiful day and night and Hoping that you feel good. And I wish you the happiness that I feel right now. And I know that next time I don't feel so happy, I can always watch this video and see myself saying things will get better and happiness is attainable. So... Peace out.